Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series titled Getting Started. Topic for the day is going to be defining sustainability. So like always, let me get you your objectives, and then we'll go ahead and start chatting. So by the end of this video, a couple things that I need you to know. First thing, discuss what can be learned from Easter Island. Second, compare and contrast usages of the term need. And finally, Describe the components of an ecological footprint. So that's what we got. Let's go ahead and jump on in. First thing we want to talk about today is just the topic of sustainability. I want to remind you guys that the definition of sustainability is meeting the needs of the present generation without affecting the future generation. And humanity depends on it. So I mentioned in a previous video about the growing human population. We've passed 7 billion. We'll probably top out around 10 billion. Problem is, as more people are added to the earth, more resources are needed. So unless we learn to start developing in a manner that is sustainable, those future generations that are coming along after us aren't going to have the resources that they need in order to meet their basic needs, get rid of their waste, all that good stuff. So as we go throughout the year, I want you to have in the back of your head the idea that if the earth is to continue, if humanity is to continue, then we're going to have to start moving towards sustainable practices. And one example that environmental scientists look to to talk about sustainability is the case of Easter Island. So Easter Island is an island out in the Pacific, and it was inhabited by Pacific Islanders up until the 1870s. The island was um, initially colonized by people who had boated to the island from other Pacific Islands. And when those first people um, <clears throat> moved to the island, it was a lush rainforest covered island you know lots of trees everywhere plenty of food everybody was happy and the people on that island started using their resources unsustainably they cut down all the forests the soil washed away they farmed the soil unsustainably when it was there and you can see in this picture right here of the statues they left behind that Easter Island doesn't have any forests left on it anymore and the civilization at Easter Island actually collapsed and it ended up like in cannibalism and you know, the whole society just kind of disappeared. And most scientists think that's because they used their uh, resources unsustainably and they used up everything that they had available to them. So many people say that Easter Island is a cautionary tale in that we should learn from it. The Easter Islanders used up all of their limited resources, so they were not able to support future generations and the society collapsed. And people say, hey, look, world, you could be headed in the same direction. So keep Easter Island in the back of your head. So I want to talk about a couple of rules of sustainability. And as we go through the rest of our class, I want you to keep these things in mind. In order for something to be considered sustainable, it must meet the following criteria. Um, it cannot damage ecological systems. So the water cycle, carbon cycle, um, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, it can't damage those systems if it is considered to be sustainable. Um, it needs to rely on renewable energy sources, but it cannot use rene renewable energy sources faster than they are able to replenish themselves, or renewable resources faster than they are able to replenish themselves. And it must use non-renewable energy sources very sparingly because they are non-renewable, they're not coming back. So when people talk about developing in a sustainable manner, they are talking about these three rules right here. And talking more about sustainable development, um, if we are to talk about developing sustainably, it's living in such a way that activities crucial to human society can continue. So this would mean that as we develop, as we build, as we grow as a human society, we need to make sure that you know the water cycle is able to keep running properly, that we are not putting out so much pollution that the trees and the air cannot take care of it, that we are not fishing the ocean so heavily that there will no longer be any seafood available. So in an eye towards sustainable development, we just need to make sure that we're taking care of things in such a way that they are still there for future generations. And along with that comes the idea of defining the term need. Now, a lot of you will say day to day, I hear it all the time in my classroom, I need this, I need that. I've heard people all the time say, oh, I need a new iPhone, or I need new shoes, or I need new jeans, or, you know, I need a hamburger, or whatever. The way we use the word need 
in first world countries is very different than the way a lot of other people would use the word need. We basically use the word need to talk about something that we want. When I say I need something, I'm really saying I want something. So for this class, we have to define the term need very, very narrowly. When we say human needs, we are talking about air, food, water, shelter, and community. These are the things, the five things that have been defined as if a human is to survive, these are the things that must be present, okay? Beyond that, everything else is a want. So you could probably argue um, and talk about healthcare and some things like that, but basically if we're talking about what we need in order to keep a human alive, air, food, water, shelter, community, and when we talk about needs in this class, that's what we're going to be talking about. This is our last topic for the day, is the idea of an ecological footprint. So I've been talking about sustainability and basically saying the same thing over and over again using the resources to meet needs now without hurting future generations. Now, the difficult thing is actually measuring how much resource a person is consuming. So in 1995, a group of scientists came up with this measurement called the ecological footprint. And ecological footprint basically measures the amount of resources that a person consumes and expresses it in area of land. So it would basically say the food you consume I don't know, takes eight acres to produce. The energy that you use takes 15 acres to produce. The water that you drink takes, you know, five acres to produce. Your ecological footprint includes all of your consumption. So it includes, like for mine right now, it includes the electricity that is being used to run my computer and light my classroom. It includes whatever resources were used to make the clothes I'm wearing. It includes the resources that were used to make the breakfast that I ate this morning or the shoes that I have on my feet or the car that I drove or the house that I live in. Um, all of those things go into your ecological footprint and then like I said it's expressed in an area of land. Now scientists have calculated that currently at the rate we are at all of humanity is living in such a way that we would need one and a quarter Earths in order to continue on forward forever. So obviously we don't have that, we only have one Earth. So humanity is already living in a way that is unsustainable. We'll talk about the fact that developed nations like America have 6% of the world's population and consume like 30% of the world's resources. So that doesn't quite work out in terms of sustainability. Um, the eco footprint of the average American is somewhere around five Earths. And that means that if everybody in the world were to live as the average American lives, then we would need five planet Earths in order to uh, sustain the human population. That's not even talking about new people added to the Earth. That's just the people that are around now. So throughout the year, we'll talk about ecological footprint. I want you to recognize that people in developed countries have got much larger ecological footprints than people in developing countries. And I think that's where we're going to end today. So thank you for joining us on the Live 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and hopefully we'll see you again.